Welcome to another long overdue video in our SDK Gaming How To series. Are you looking to display a different iRacing overlay to your stream viewers compared to what you see when driving? Well, that's exactly what we're going to take a look at today as we talk through how to add a second instance in your iRacing live timing overlay. Before continuing through this video, you want to make sure you're at the same point that I am here. So on the right hand side, that's my OBS. But that could be whatever other streaming software that you're using instead. And we can see that we've got our overlay displaying in that streaming software, in OBS in my case. On the left hand side, that's my main driving monitor. And it's exactly the same overlay that is currently displaying through our Live HUD app. If you haven't got your overlay displaying in both like this, then you'll need to go back through the iRacing Live Timing, Live HUD, and Live Streamer tutorials all linked in the description before we continue any further. Uh, the first tutorial for iRacing Live Timing is also linked in the top right hand side of the video now. So once you're at the same starting point that I am, we're ready to look at how to customize what is displaying on each screen. So the problem we have at the minute, or the potential problem is that the overlay is identical in both views. So your stream viewers are going to see exactly what it is that you see whilst driving. Now, it may be that you want that to be different. You know, maybe you want the viewers to have more information so they can see the trap map, so they can see the weather, time delta of other drivers, but you don't want all that information cluttering up your screen as you're driving. Or maybe you want to hide some information from your viewers. So you have your fuel calculator displayed on your monitor, but you don't want your stream viewers to know your fuel figures. So we're gonna be able to do that by creating a second instance that one of your overlays are gonna run on and we'll be able to control them independently. Now in our example, I'm gonna set that second instance up on our live HUD app, our main driving view. But equally, you can do exactly the same that we're about to go through now uh, and set up that second instance on your OBS or other streaming software instead. So the first thing that we all need to do is tell the Live HUD app to display this second instance instead of just our default overlay. And to do that, we're going to head to the Live HUD app settings. So you remember the Live HUD app itself lives in our system tray down here. Uh, it's the blue S icon that we're looking for. And so you want to right click and go into settings. Uh, you'll remember this is where you adjusted the position and the width and height. And you can see down on the bottom here, we've got an in a field for instance. Uh, you can call your new instance anything you would like. Uh, just make sure it's a single word. And for simplicity later, I would suggest making the first letter a capital and the rest lowercase. I'm just going to call mine HUD, H-U-D, since that's the, what we're working on, the HUD instance. And you'll see that when I click into a new box to apply that name, the overlay just disappears. And that's because we're yet to tell iRacing Live Timing that we want to display anything in this new instance. We're still just displaying the default overlay that's still shown in OBS. Now, if we're going to try and do exactly the opposite and apply this instance in OBS itself, then all we would need to do is go into our browser source that you created before. And at the very end of the URL that is entered there, enter the AND symbol, the, the ampersand, then instance, the equal symbol and then whatever you're calling your instance. Uh, again, I would suggest making the first letter a capital, make sure it's just a single word and then OBS will be displaying this new instance instead. And of course you wouldn't have that instance name entered in the live HUD up. So you'd only have the instance set in one of those locations. Uh, so for us, we're just keeping OBS as our default overlay. So the next thing I would suggest is us organizing our components that we actually want to be controlling in our new instance. So we're here in our remote control tab in iRacing Live Timing. Remember, you can use the F4 key to close and open that tab. And at the moment, these components are just controlling our default overlay, the one that we currently have displaying in OBS. So let's organize these and separate out the ones that we will be using in the new instance. If you hit F2 on your keyboard to enter edit mode and then Alt and left click on your component of choice, we'll use the battle box in this example here, you'll see you'll select every widget within that component. Down on the bottom right here, you can then use the copy and paste buttons or you can use Control C and Control V on your keyboard. If I move this component away, we can see that it is indeed a duplicate. And with everything selected still, uh, we can see we have a field for tab here on the bottom. Uh, Legacy is the name of the default tab, the, the main tab. And you can call this new tab anything you would like. 
it doesn't need to be the same as the instance name, they're unconnected. Once I hit enter, we're going to see the battle box disappear and it's now moved into this new HUD tab. It's retained the position that we left it in the main tab, so again if I alt and click on it, then we can drag and reposition it to where we would like. So just continue adding your components to this new tab, either by using that copy paste method that we just did there, or now that we have this new HUD tab created, we can use the import from library option and import any other components directly into this tab. So for instance, if I select weather and then import, it's imported to the HUD tab that I'm currently viewing instead of the, the legacy, the main tab. So continue adding whichever components you want to your HUD. Uh, we also want to grab some of these settings components as we'll need those in a moment. So things like initial settings, timing tower settings, driver settings, etc. So you can see that for now I've just added a handful of components into this new HUD tab. And next we need to assign these to our new instance because at the minute they're just still controlling our default overlay that is here in OBS. Uh, you'll see that, for instance, if I use the show battle box option, it's displaying that just on the default overlay. So let's go back into live timing again. Uh, make sure we're still in edit mode with F2. And this time we want to alt and drag around everything in this tab. So alt and drag and we'll see this time it's not actually selecting every single widget within all the components. You can see that the background labels aren't selected, the help link isn't selected, uh, and a couple of additional buttons as well. That's because when we use Alt and Drag, it only selects widgets that can be assigned an instance name. Um, you can see now that we have our instance field displayed, and it says Overlay, which is the name of our default instance. I can go ahead now then and assign these widgets to our new instance. And remember that you need to enter the name exactly as you entered in your live HUD app settings. Uh, and so I've applied that. And the reason by the way that these couple of buttons here for iRacing UI aren't selected is because those buttons aren't controlling your overlay, they're controlling iRacing directly. So any widgets that can't affect your overlay won't be selected with that method. Now, if I use that show button, uh, if I come out of edit mode on the battle box, then I do not have a battle box displayed on OBS, but I also don't have it showing in live HUD either, because if I flick back to iRacing and live timing for a moment, uh, I haven't yet selected that I'm in a replay file. So I need to select the display option for replay file. And now that I have the battle box is showing. Um, so that's step one then of how to display some new elements in our new instance. For anything you want displayed on your new instance, you can use the show buttons uh, and also you'll need to complete any of the empty fields that you have uh, to adjust the settings as you want. You can see now that I have these three different components displaying in our second instance and it's probably worth us thinking now about how we might want to reposition these. At the minute it's all a little bit cluttered around the bottom left so perhaps we're going to try and do something a little bit different. Uh, if we go back to our live timing view. Uh, you might already be familiar with how style overrides work, but again, if you haven't taken a look at the editing CSS styles manual or the videos that we have, uh, I've got it linked at the top of the screen and again in the video description. Uh, at the minute, everything that's in style overrides is only affecting our default, our main overlay. And we mentioned earlier on that the default overlay actually has the name overlay. So that's the naming convention for everything that's currently in the style overrides. Uh, so if we want to start affecting our new instance, we're going to need to start making some adjustments. Uh, if we're looking at our battle box component first of all, uh, let's say I want to move the battle box up to the top right hand corner of the screen for instance, then I need to scroll down in our style overrides until we find the one labelled battle. Uh, if you can't find it, then click the question mark on the battle box component to head to the help page and then you can just copy across the example code and we want to duplicate that block of code. So you can see the little symbol that we have on the left to try and help demonstrate where the block is. So I want to select all of this, Control C to copy, Control V to paste it then just below. And if you double click on the word overlay, uh, we can now type in our new instance name. However, for style overrides, you do not have a capital letter at the start. So for me, that's just going to be HUD all lowercase. Uh, and if I start adjusting some of these values, it's now going to be adjusting the HUD instance instead of the default overlay that I've got showing in OBS. So we said that we want to move it to the top. 
Uh, we don't actually have a top property at the minute, but that's no problem. Uh, just hit enter, hit space a few times to keep everything tidy. Uh, so top, and then let's try 20 pixels for now with our semicolon at the end. Um, but we can't have a battle box 20 pixels from the bottom and 20 pixels from the top. So we need to change bottom to unset. If I just flick you back to the HUD view and I press F5 to apply the changes in live timing, we can see now that the style overrides for the battle box has applied, uh, but it hasn't applied for OBS. So let's bring up the battle box for OBS so you can just see that we've got these two separate rules in style overrides. It's displaying in two different locations for each of the instances. So, you know, this is the beginning of what we're starting to talk about with customizing what we're seeing in each instance. Uh, so let's look back at live timing again for a minute. And if we need to make any other adjustments to the battle box, then we can do that as well. I think probably one key thing we can think about is that for OBS, uh, the overlay is probably quite a good size at the moment. I think it would be pretty readable for stream viewers, you know, especially if somebody's watching from like a mobile, that sort of thing. But for me driving, you know, if I'm using like a big 27 inch monitor or something like that, you know, displaying it full screen, it's not really gonna be needed to be that big, right? So let's shrink down our battle box uh, that we have in the top right. And again, to remind you from your style overrides tutorial that you've looked at before, if we want to adjust the sizes of our components, it's this translate Z value here um, within the, the transform rule. And if we make that a positive number, it increases the size. And if it's a negative number, it will reduce the size. Let's try minus 200 pixels as an example. Uh, let's just have a quick shot back of the overlay again before I hit apply. And we can see this has shrunk it down quite a bit, but it's also pulled it away from the right hand edge. So in my right property, let's try say minus 50 as the value. And yeah, that's pushed it across a bit. Maybe minus 70 should be about right. As you've probably figured out for every component that you're wanting to adjust, those are the steps that you're gonna to need to be going through each time. You're gonna go in and adjust those style overrides to apply for your new instance and adjust the data that you're selecting on each of your components to get the outcome that you want. We're not just restricted to you know, the size and position type of changes to have a different layout of overlay for you and your viewers. You could also change even the theme as well. So. Probably for me, if I was driving, I'd say our default overlay is quite easy to read at a quick glance. Whereas maybe for my stream viewers, I want something a bit more stylized. So probably a good option would be our brand new WEC overlay. Uh, if I go back into live timing for a moment, we're in our HUD tab, which I wanna leave alone. So let's go back to our main tab, which is controlling OBS. If I again go to F2 to edit mode, import from library, uh, scroll down to the themes component, just import that in. Once I come out of edit mode of F2, I just select the WEC overlay option and then let's just take you back to see the OBS and you can see now we've got the WEC style overlay displaying in OBS but I've still got my default F1 style overlay showing on my monitor. So I think that's a pretty good start for, you know, what we're looking at in this tutorial. You know, you're able to customize the overlay individually between what you're seeing on your own screen whilst driving uh, versus what your viewers can see on your stream. Uh, if you have any questions or issues, then just jump into our Discord server that is linked in the description below and we can try and help you through it. And hopefully we'll see you again soon for another how-to video.